ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு மெக்கி டெக்கி லேர்ன் ஆஸ் இன்ஜினியர் டீச் ஆஸ் சாம்பியன் ஃபஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் ஐ வில் லைக் டு தேங்க் மை ஃபேமிலி ஃபார் த இயர் கண்டினியூஸ் சப்போர்ட் அண்ட் என்கரேஜ்மெண்ட் ஃபார் கிரியேட்டிங் திஸ் கைண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ டெக்னிக்கல் வீடியோஸ் இன் பப்ளிக் டொமைன் ஐ வில் லைக் டு தேங்க் மை மென்டர் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஆர் சுரேந்திரன் ஃப்ரம் கவர்மெண்ட் காலேஜ் ஆஃப் டெக்னாலஜி கோயம்புத்தூர் ஃபார் இக்னைட்டிங் மீ ஏ ஸ்பார்க் ஆஃப் கிரியேட்டிங் தீஸ் கைண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ டெக்னிக்கல் வீடியோஸ் இன் த பப்ளிக் டொமைன் and i would like to thank almighty for my good health and broad mind and i would like to thank my friends followers my dear students and subscribers for their continuous support today's topic of interest is types of steel and cast iron as we know the iron carbon diagram as we know from the iron carbon diagram the materials is basically in iron carbon family is divided into two types one is steel and another one is a cast iron where the steel contains less than 0.2 uh, 2.1% of carbon and cast iron will having carbon percentage from 2.1 to 6.67 uh, percentage and we have there is a types of steels as well as the types of the cast iron we name it as a plain carbon steel alloy steel like that a steel can be subdivided and cast iron can be subdivided into pig iron wrought iron spiral graphite iron and gray cast iron like that uh, cast iron can be classified let me discuss about how the steel is classified and the types of the steels are and their applications we going to discuss first one is the type of a steel basically the type of a steel is subdivided into two types one is plain carbon steel and alloy steel in plain carbon steel which contains 0.4 percentage of carbon that is basically as a plain carbon steel in the plain carbon steel we have a three categories one is a low low carbon steel medium carbon steel and high carbon steel in low carbon steel which is contains less than 0.25 percentage of carbon and medium carbon steel is uh, the carbon percentage is from 0.25 to 0.6 percentage where the high carbon steel which is having 0.6 to 1.5 percentage of carbon the we know that the maximum percentage of carbon in the steel is 2.1 therefore high carbon steel is less than 2.1 that is 1.5 percentage is the maximum content when the alloy steel which is having uh, iron and carbon plus some other alloying elements like manganese silicon copper nickel and etc in that if the alloying element if the alloying element elements are less than 5 percentage it is called as a high strength low alloy steel that is hsla steel and if the alloying element percentage is more than 5 percentage which is called as a high alloy steel hcas high alloy steel this uh, alloy steel and plain carbon steel are designated as like this if the if it is designated as a four letter word four letter number 1020 here this 20 indicates 20 indicates percentage of carbon which is called 0.2 percentage of carbon so this is the indication so this is the indication where we can say 1 xxx so this is the percentage of carbon content in the steels like that the plain carbon steel as well as the alloy steel are designated in the low carbon steel it cannot be hardened by heat treatment this, this is our understanding we cannot uh, hardened by heat treatment can be hardened and strengthened by cold working or case hardening that is our understanding about the low carbon steel 
for an example pipe lines bridge sections channels metal sheets and beams are made up of low carbon steel in medium carbon steel which is contains more than uh, 0.252 0.6% of carbon the applications like machine parts automobile parts connecting rods screw drivers or made up of uh, medium carbon steel it can be heat treatable medium carbon steel can be heat treatable uh, gears crankshafts railway rail races or all are made up of medium carbon steel in high carbon steel which is contains 0.6 to 1.5% of carbon uh the parts like cutting tools die chisels are made up of high carbon steel basically it is high hardened therefore heat treatment is not at all possible the alloying steels which contains other than carbon the alloying elements like manganese silicon copper nickel tungsten chromium vanadium cobalt are added to attain the desired property for information if there is a hss tool hss which is designated as 1841 that is 18 percentage of vanadium sorry tungsten and 4 percentage of chromium and 1 percentage of vanadium is there the rest of the thing so this is by adding this we get 23 percentage and the other than is the iron and carbon is added therefore it will become high speed steel the basic elements are the iron and carbon the alloys are 18 percentage of tungsten 4 percentage of chromium and 1 percentage of vanadium to attain the desired property so this is called as a the alloying element percentages are more than 5 percentage let we have 23 percentage therefore it is a high alloy steel so this is our understanding next one is the low alloy steel the low alloy steels are less than 5 percentage of alloy and high high alloy steel is more than 5 percentage of alloy where the high alloy steel basically the stainless steel and tool steel are classified from high alloy steels the high alloy steels are having high ductile nature in cryogenic temperature basically the stainless steel is speaking the stainless steel is containing high percentage of chromium therefore it is not corroded and it is not oxidized oxidized generally when we weld the stainless steel it get easily get oxidizing so that is the important property of the cast iron sorry stainless steel here the stainless steel is divided into again further divided into three types one is austenitic stainless steel ferritic stainless steel and martensitic stainless steel in austenitic stainless steel having less than 0.15 percentage of carbon and it is non magnetic in nature austenitic stainless steel is non magnetic in nature and it contains chromium of 16 to 26 percentage carbon of 0.15 percentage nickel of 21 percentage and other alloying elements like phosphorus phosphor sulfur titanium molybdenum of each 0.8 percentage is there this austenitic stainless steel is corrosion free for an example food and food processing uh, metals are using the uh, this austenitic stainless steel householding applications dairy dairy industries transport transport industries are using austenitic stainless steel the important property is corrosion free next one is the ferritic stainless steel they are good resistance to corrosion good strength and toughness is having they are having and ferritic stainless steel is a magnetic property it contains magnetic property the chromium of 12 to 25 percentage magnesium of 1 to 1.5 percentage and silicon and nickel each of 1 percentage 
therefore it it gives good resistance about corrosion and good strength and toughness these metals are used in oil burner parts petroleum industries or some of the applications which they are using ferretic stainless steel in modern ferretic stainless steel it is having a decent amount of chromium of 12 to 25 percentage and carbon of 1 to 1.5 percentage of carbon silicon magnesium of 1 percentage they are having good hardness ductility and thermal conductivity the pump parts like valves turbine blades and impulse turbine blades surgical instruments are used uh, are made up of modern static stainless steel so this is also having uh, less corro corrosion free material material the next one is the tool steel the tool steel having high carbon alloy steels they are good toughness good wear resistance good machinability and having good resistance to decarburizing decarburizing is the very important property because at the temperature at the high temperature it loses the hardness and carbon so this tool steel won't decarburize that is our understanding next high strength low alloy steel they are having a high yield strength it can be welded without becoming brittle generally alloy steels when we weld the alloy steels it will become brittle whereas hsla it won't become brittle and it is lightweight uh, therefore 20 to 30 percentage of weight can be saved in hsla and high corrosive resistance next is a more aging steel more aging steel which is different from the other steels which having low carbon and high alloy steels it is having a tensile strength of 1900 mega pascal which is having very high strength and can be welded after aging after aging only it can be welded the compositions like nickel of 18 percentage cobalt of 7 percentage carbon of 0 0.05 percentage since it is a low carbon steel very low carbon content is there and small other elements small other metals can be used this more aging steel are used in helicopter parts die casting dies fire guns space vehicles are made up of this more aging steel and next we are going to discuss about the types of casting cast iron where the cast iron is basically subdivided into gray cast iron white cast iron malleable cast iron or spheroidal graphite cast iron or nodular cast iron the property of the cast iron is very very important is it is having more than two percentage of carbon it having good strength and rigid under compression it, so the cast iron cannot be used for tensile loads it is only permittable for compressive loads so that is our understanding the silicon sulfur manganese phosphorus or other contents constituents which are in the cast iron first we are going to discuss about gray cast iron the gray cast iron contains 3 to 4 percentage of carbon and 1 to 3 percentage of silicon and manganese of 0.4 to 1 percentage and a magnesium of uh, 0.15 to 1 percentage of uh, magnesium it is a carbon present in free form in gray cast iron carbon is presented in free form when we touch a gray cast iron material our hands are become blackish why it has become blackish is by means of a carbon is presented in free form therefore the carbon is absorbed in the hand the properties like carbon in uniform form excellent compression strength uh, compression strength of gray cast iron is 5 percentage of uh, the tensile strength uh, the tensile strength is 
about 5 percentage of the compression strength that is our understanding more corrosive resistance due to silicon self lubricating property excellent machinability due to the graphite or carbon presented in free form good vibration damping capacity so that is why this gray cast iron is used in machine tool beds or machine tool bodies engine blocks engine cylinders brake drum piston rings and agriculture applications and what not they are using gray cast iron next is a white cast iron the carbon is presented in the combined form combined form of carbon is used there the carbon of 1.8 to 3 percentage of carbon is there silica of 0.5 to 1.9 percentage magnesium of 0.25 to 0.8 percentage and phosphorus of 0.05 to 0.2 percentage sulfur of 0.3 percentage the property of white cast iron is very hard and brittle and a high abrasive resistance it is having high abrasive resistance high tensile strength and low compressive strength cannot be machined it is having poor machinability property it can be made as a castings for an example rollers and ball bearings ball bearing balls are made up of white cast iron car wheels are made up of white cast iron and these are all some of the examples of white cast iron next one is a malleable cast iron malleable cast iron is the raw material it is it is basically white cast iron is made up of malleable cast iron by heat treatment by heat treatment of white cast iron which is converted into malleable cast iron it is having a 2 to 3 percentage of carbon and 0.2 to 0.6 percentage of magnesium and 0.1 percentage of silicon and 0.5 percentage of phosphor phosphorus during heat treatment the white cast iron the cementite presented in the cast iron is break it into ferrite and graphite that is why the malleable cast iron the flake form of the uh, carbons are converted into nodular form in malleable cast iron due to the heat treatment process so the malleable cast iron is made from white cast iron by means of heat treatment is our understanding now here we are going to discuss uh, the designation of the cast iron basic designation of the cast iron the basic designation of the cast iron is in five numerical words five numerical numbers in the last two letters designates the percentage of elongation and first three will designate the maximum tensile strength in pascals psi and the properties of malleable cast iron is high strength high yield strength and high tensile strength and it is having high Young's modulus low coefficient of thermal expansion good impact and fatigue strength the examples like brake shoe agri machineries and connecting rods wheel hubs switch gears are made up of malleable cast iron next is a spheroidal graphite cast iron or nodular cast iron or ductile cast iron so in name itself it is having ductile which have a cast iron which produce for a ductile application that is tensile load application is the uh, sg ion which is having carbon of 3.2 to 4 percentage and silicon of 1 to 3 percentage 1.8 to 3 percentage and magnesium of 0.2 to 0.05 percentage and phosphorus of 0.08 percentage and silicon of 0.01 percentage here the nodules of the cast iron is produced by means of the magnesium or cerulean this magnesium will convert graphite flakes into nodular form that is why it is having a good tensile property generally the uh, gray cast iron as per ASTM standard American Society of Testing Materials it is designated in 6 or 7 digit number where first 
first digits will give the minimum tensile strength in psi and middle two digits will give minimum yield point strength and the last two digit gives the percentage of elongation for an example if the sgin is designated as 60 40 and 18 this 60 is the minimum tensile strength this 40 is the minimum yield strength and 18 is the percentage of elongation and we have an important designation like 40 c8 that is 40 means 0.4 percentage of carbon and 0.08 percentage of magnesium is our understanding and also fg400 is an another type of a designation which means uh, 400 is a minimum tensile strength and this uh, sg ion the applications are the crankshafts gears pinions and uh, rollers rocker arm flanges uh, knuckle joints steering knuckles are some of the applications of sg ion the property is it is excellent ductility tensile and yield strengths good toughness then gray cast iron good machinability good hardness good impact strength good fatigue strength high modulus of elasticity so these are all the some of the properties of the gray cast iron sorry sg cast iron spheroidal graphite cast iron now we are going to have some of the important properties to be remo remember that is point to remember one is the cyaniding and nitriding are the case hardening process which increased hardness of low carbon steels so for the low carbon steels the hardness can be improved by means of either cyaniding or nitriding and no quenching in nitriding process and there is quenching after cyaniding process this are all this is the two important parameters while we are hardening try to harden the low carbon steel in nitriding process uh, we can achieve 1000 VRC and in the cyaniding process we can achieve 900 VRC that is Vickers hardness number uh, which is tested in Vickers hardness machine and next the elastic limit of the cast iron as compared to its ultimate breaking strength is approximately same that is our understanding so the in basically the cast iron the stress strain relationship they will not show any evidence before breaking so therefore the ultimate breaking strength and uh, yield strength ultimate and the yield strength are approximately same the seasonal cracking is observed in brass that is stronger than copper and the age hardening age hardening is employed for non ferrous materials and age hardening is not possible for the ferrous materials ferrous materials are basically iron is major constituent the presence of hydrogen in the steel causes embrittlement and hardness of the steel is greatly improved by with the help of cyaniding with the help of cyaniding the percentage of carbon is increased in plain carbon steel its weldability will get reduced steel pulley are light in weight than cast iron pulleys of same capacity due to presence of steel about 40 to 60 percentage less weight but greater strength and durability is achieved in steel pulleys in carburizing we have three types one is pack carburizing another one is liquid carburizing another one is gas carburizing after the process of quenching it needs a wicker hardness after the process of quenching only the pack carburizing is done and uh, wicker's hardness is used for measuring the hardness and having nearly 800 VHC VRC can be achieved so with this I am closing the topic the types of the steel and cast iron I hope that I have given enough knowledge and enough transformation to you all if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section thank you